people, one person was sentenced to prison when he refused to go to war. In recent times, uh, the number of those who evade mobilization increased 10 times. More than 9,000 criminal affairs were initiated. More of them were, many of them were uh, passed to the court with the blessing of the Kiev regime. This is a great hunt. The boy officers are committed to take drones and to open fire to target all those who try to evade to uh, some foreign states in order to evade mobilization. So where is all the civilized Europe? Do you remember when it persecuted the authorities of Germany for these measures who crossed this Berlin Wall? Can you remember all those words against these authorities demanding to, to, uh, to believe to the principles of freedom? Where is this democracy? Why do you keep silence? So what are you? What are you talking about? You are slaves. You are slaves of your own misanthropic ideology. Why do you not criticize the Kiev regime? Why do you not oppose the question in the uh, Human Rights Council of the United Nations and uh, other international organizations such as OSU? And I do understand uh, what way it is paralyzed uh, by the actions of the Westerners. But uh, you can always perform a miracle. As for many years you have been calling for democracy and for freedom online. Why do you put a blind eye to this dehumanization happening in Ukraine now? This has nothing to do with human rights, democracy, freedom. It's a moral collapse. And the Zelensky regime continues to struggle with history and the memory of those who did not spare their own lives in, in the name of the common victory of fascism. On March 21st, uh, the very portion of the Kiev Museum of the Second World War decided to dismantle the high relief of the Battle of Kursk. In the, in the view of local goalitas of culture, it is, quote unquote, a symbol of Bolshevik propaganda and monumental art, quote unquote. So that's why we decided to dismantle it. The Battle of Kursk. Just fancy that. In reality, modern bandwagons are terribly afraid of any reminder of a collapse of the ideological idols of the Third Reich and uh, of inevitable fate with the Vaisman. So that is why we are so fiercely fighting the, uh, the memory, their own memory, the monuments to Soviet soldiers. That's why we desecrate the mass graves. So we pass from explaining the ideology to putting down the rest. But human memory is beyond their control. Uh, I will have to break this to them. People remember and remember who saved humanity during the brown plague and who mercilessly killed hundreds of thousands of innocent women, old people, children, destroyed peaceful towns and villages, sold terror cows who sold hunger. And those facts confirm the relevance of task of special military operation to denazify and militarify Ukraine and eliminate rates coming from its territory. And this will definitely be fulfilled. And now for the situation in Moldova, the Moldovan leadership continues uh, to voice as standard accusations are made of Russia of a hybrid war and undermining the European way of Republic of Moldova, as the recent regime says. And they uh, explain it by the fact that the Russian regions allegedly see of a Euro Eurasian, European integration success of Chisinau. And as we see, they are impressed uh, by the free and democratic Moldova start doubting the imperial mode of development of Russia. So that is why, respectively, the task of Moscow is in the logic of Chisinau leadership is uh, to run uh, Moldova uh, off the European road by all means. I do think of what uh, we have received uh, several mail which was addressed to Zelensky and they're using it now because what kind of thing are we talking about and it makes me wonder what the Moldovans think about this according to a recent poll nearly 60 percent of Moldovan citizens think that uh, the situation in the country is going the wrong way 62 percent um, do not agree with the fact that the uh, natives of Romania hold public office positions and more than 60 percent are convinced that the actions of authorities on reform and judicial branch did not lead to fighting corruptions and are only aimed at uh, getting control over judicial and legislative. More than 70 percent of citizens describe the situation under the Sando regime as rollback or stagnation and nearly 60 percent think that Maya Sando leaves off implicit incomes and does not deserve to be re-elected. I think this number speaks for themselves and of the evidence how the leadership of uh, Moldova has distanced itself from the interests of young citizens and against the role in public support. Um, in a very main fact that the presidentials are going to be held in autumn, uh, they do not find support in the own electorate, in the own citizens, they look for it abroad and they might be right to do so because it looks like it's uh, for money from abroad that they're going to be re-elected on March 21st, the Moldovan parliament uh, has adopted the uh, draft law of voting by mail ballot in pilot regime in the first reason. Uh, the thing is that it only it is only possible for those Moldovan citizens who live in the US and in Canada, in the Moldovan diaspora of many thousands, which lives in Russia, and it's, uh, uh, those people live in more than 20 federal entities of our country will be stripped of such an opportunity. And this is just a one-off of, of those offensive discrimination of uh, Moldovan citizens by their own authorities. On February 26th, the Minister of Culture of Moldova decided not to include a country on the list of countries, uh, which were going to plan uh, for March sure celebrations for national uh, festivities celebrating uh, the arrival of spring but uh, fortunately we failed and uh, uh, last week Russian Moldovans uh, held a uh, March, March 2024 which was a festival which included uh, people from more than 10 regions of Russia uh, was an exhibition of uh, costumes uh, sampling of traditional dishes Moldovan performance performed and so on 
So what uh, does they say? It confirms what uh, Russian citizens see not the European integration successes of the uh, Santo regime, the way they put it. I must admit that this success goes unnoticed in Moldova. We are going to comment on everything what is happening because the Sandra regime is using the word, such words as Russia, Russian, as diminishing words. They are doing so to breed hatred for our country among Moldovans who have never in their lives, never in the modern history, expressed anything but their willingness uh, to be friends with Russia and to continue and develop their relations with representatives of our multi-confessional country. And that's what we're going to bear in mind. And uh, we are going to retaliate with Sandu lies. And I would like to say another thing. You know, Sandu strikes a blow not against Russia, not only against Russia, not only against us, and the senses of those people who do not want to become this uh, kind of uh, uh, aggressive cattle, what the way Ukrainians do under Zelensky. She strikes an even more harmful blow because she tries to exterminate inside Moldova the love of Moldovans for their own culture, their own country, their own land, their own history, and they are real heroes, they are true heroes. So that's what she has started out on. And you're not going to believe that. I cannot believe it myself. But we received a response from uh, Great Britain on our request with Kripal case. And you know what, to continue our efforts to identify the circumstances of our incident in Salisbury in March 2018. Uh, it had to do with uh, citizens of Russia, Sirkin, Union, Kripal. So what do you think for all these years and how many years have passed, nearly six years have passed? For six years, we have been sending out dozens of diplomatic notes. We did not receive anything but write-offs. And yes, it was recently, but as a response to yet another diplomatic note, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Great Britain, uh, for the first time since uh, mid-2018, have sent out a responsive note, which uh, with several reservations uh, can be seen as some kind of uh, belated official reactions. So six years, uh, we say in Russia, what you wait for the promise for three years, so it was twice as long. And this belated note states that Julius Kripal allegedly took note of the our suggestion of consular assistance, but declined it. And this is very similar to recent fake news against uh, British Duchess, Princess Kate Middleton. And do you remember how other people spoke for her? How the British media, uh, the English tabloids, said that whether she was eaten by reptiloids, whether uh, she was a victim to the Illuminati, whether she fell a victim to the abuse of her own spouse. We wrote many fake news about her. And now the same thing happens to Yulia Skripai. By trying to allegedly describe her decision and the contact details of the consular agency of the Russian embassy in London as uh, the MFA of Great Britain's state are at the hands of uh, those Russian. And um, the English diplomats said they're not going to uh, comment on information of official outcomes of the investigation in this incident because uh, they are continuing with the relevant legal procedures. And we see what uh, we take the time because for more than 13 years of uh, legal torturing of Julian Assange, uh, the Authorities of Great Britain came up with another sentence yesterday. We came up with yet another decision after 13 years. Let me remind you once again. But this decision was mismade uh, about postponing it. He has to wait for more. And we understand the situation around this Kripal case only took about six years, which is uh, not that long. It's, and it's for more than 70 years what we have been looking into the uh, Kennedy case. Uh, so we still have time. We are going to wait. And as for Sergei Kripal, we don't see a word about his destiny, about his fate. And I don't understand why. I'd like to ask uh, the British, is he alive? Can you tell us whether he is alive? We see this forced reaction of the, the British side as a failed attempt to justify the inexplicable and wrongful hiding of information about Russian citizens for many years. We see that this is another information manipulation. We will continue to methodically seek comprehensive information about the fate of uh, Russian citizens who disappeared without a trace of the territory of Great Britain six years ago. We would like to shed light on all the elements of incident in Salisbury and would like to insist on justice in, for this case. And yet another subject. And we have seen uh, the uh, condescending statements uh, by, by the embassy of US, uh, as well as Great Britain, Canada, France, and, and Germany in Bishkek. Uh, when on the 24th of March, uh, a new law on uh, NGOs uh, was passed in Kyrgyzstan. It's aimed at uh, the organization of a uh, non governmental sector, and the Westerners have forgotten everything about ethics. We decided to show to a sovereign country what kind of laws we can pass and what kind of laws we cannot pass. This was a way we uh, showed the neo colonial nature. And we also display the nature of those organizations which uh, were engaged together with them. And we can see what this intervention within uh, the domestic affairs of a sovereign country. And I would like to remind you that a package for the defense of democracy was uh, passed by the European Commission, which provides registration and control of activities of foreign agents on the territory of EU member states. In particular, for those countries who uh, are not part of Joseph Borrell's uh, quote unquote, foreign garden quote unquote, are uh, 
a democratic accountability and registration with transparency register is envisaged. So what kind of thing we can advise to other countries when the European Union is thriving? I must admit that it starts to give a strange smile. And uh, another subject, because we see what uh, messages come up on the media uh, about the supplies of Ukrainian foodstuffs to Romania, which are, do not comply with EU standards. I would like to say that, uh, bearing in mind that it's a geopolitical status, uh, Romania has become one of those uh, key destinations for transit of agricultural products from Ukraine, which led to the situation of local market with cheaper and over low and quality food. And as a consequence, uh, in the beginning of 2023 and in early 2024, an unprecedented series of agrarian protests took place in Romania, during which uh, we repeatedly blocked the uh, work of relevant custom posts with the help of agricultural machinery. The local quality of grain, corn, rape, and so on was talked about on the uh, Romanian information services and uh, the leaders of local associations of agricultural producers made similar statements on the subject. But uh, the Romanian government has not taken any clear actions to protect the interests of its farmers. But this uh, does not come as a surprise that it has long been known that the current Romanian authorities prefer not to contradict Brussels, which is dominant to assist the key regime in selling Ukrainian products. And in fact, they act with the detriment of national interests. And there is no doubt that this approach will sooner or later play a cruel joke on them. And I would like to announce, oh, we are going to publish this today, after the briefing is finished, in, in the next of briefing we will share links. So, uh, we are uh, celebrating the 200th anniversary of Russian Army's overseas campaign of 1813-1814. Uh, we have defeated the Napoleon's Great Army during the Patriotic War of 1812. Russian troops from the walls. Uh, we freed uh, the peoples of Europe from Napoleon's oppressions, and we have a fight to march uh, thousands uh, of miles to the French capital, which surrendered to the mercy of the victors on uh, the 31st of March 1814. I would like to celebrate this with a historic material, which I'm going to talk about. The only thing I have to say is that, uh, that we, after more than 25 years of uh, wars came to its end uh, when various peace treaties in the Congress of uh, Vienna took place. In less than two years after the beginning of the campaign against Russia, which was announced with such bomb by the French propaganda, France was defeated. And it, just a few weeks later, Emperor Napoleon abdicated. And coming back to this glorious page of Russian history today, and it's an inglorious page for French history, I must admit. So today we pay tribute to the memory of our heroic ancestors and to our strength and inspiration from their lives and exploits. The current Western rulers of a new Napoleon, who once again threatened to send troops to the East, we would advise them not to forget the lessons of history about how their predecessors always ended up losing when they wanted to inflict their strategic defeat to our country. And uh, I would like to say once again that we're going to publish this material on our social media and we'll share a link in the text of today's briefing. And yet another subject, uh, today uh, we continue to implement a program to support national literature to the peoples of Russia with the framework of which since 2016, unique books in 69 languages of the peoples of Russian Federation have been published in the series of modern literature, uh, poetry, children's literature, prose, dramaturgy, artistic publicist, uh, folk wisdom, and so on. And uh, at present, work is continuing on the preparation of collections which present a literature by language groups. And in 2023, an anthology entitled Poetry and Prose of Finno, Greek and Semitic Peoples was published. It includes original poetry and prose works by uh, 106 authors written in 13 Finno, Greek and Semitic uh, languages of the peoples of Russia. They have artistic translation into Russia as well as short essays on the history of national literatures and references to the authors I include as well. Uh, the portal of national literatures of the peoples of Russia, which contains unique texts and their artistic translations included in the series of books, modern literature of the peoples of Russia, reflects the diversity of literature in Russia from the second half of the 20th century to the present day. And I would like to say that the implementation of this program is part of Russian contribution to achieving goals of a uh, United Nations national decade of indigenous languages. It also contributes to a digitalization of linguistic and cultural heritage of indigenous people with the spread of uh, multilingualism in cyberspace. The study of preservation of languages and the principal books in rare languages, and I am now prepared to answer your questions, is international life here? Yes, good afternoon, Ms. Zaharova. Uh, today, in your introduction, you have already talked about information exchange. Uh, well, it's linked uh, to the terrorist attacks in the city hall, and the French President Emmanuel Macron said that France has offered Russia to strengthen cooperation in this fight against terrorism. I'll give you a quote. We have entered into contacts at all levels, both technical and ministerial, in order to be able to offer our cooperation uh, based on the information that we have, and which may be useful for the Russian side. Uh, how could you comment on this uh, statement, and how sincere do you think it looks? And as for sincerity, um, I would like to say a few words about uh, Russia's position in terms of fighting terrorism. We have always been consistent in advocating strengthening international cooperation in the fight against uh, extremism, terrorism, and any forms of radicalism. And we were sincere in empathizing with France, which has been repeatedly subjected to terrorist attacks in recent years. We try to maintain a professional dialogue on this issue with Paris and other Western capitals. We have done so uh, bilaterally as well as within international organizations. And we have done so despite the double standards, hidden agendas, and attempts to divide terrorists into the good ones and the bad ones. And and we see that terrorists and extremists were divided into friends and strangers by the West. Yeah. To moderate and radical. We had this counter-terrorist dialogue even despite the fact that we were poured 
with some waste from the Western capitals for our counter-terrorist operations in Syria at the request of official Damascus. So despite all these facts, until 2022, the Intergovernmental Commission combating new challenges and threats still functioned. We had some contacts between our relevant authorities, but since the beginning of the special military operation, the French side almost closed our cooperation at their own discretion to cooperate with us. What, what I'm talking about when I mean at their discretion? Because it was not coordinated with us. I, th I think it was influenced by Washington. As for the recent statements of Mr. Macron, but the Minister of the Russian Federation did not receive any suggestions from the French side, including in the framework of this bilateral cooperation on combating international terrorism, has not received yet. You see, the similar scenario we've seen a few weeks ago when Macron declared about some kind of peaceful initiatives, negotiation initiative, if you remember, the Russian president said that he knows nothing about them, even to make some first statement when he was asked at the press conference by journalists. Instead of clarifying its first initiative addressed to Russia, Paris decided to consolidate its effect and announced a kind of this, but we have received nothing to this end. I cannot say why. One of my, I think maybe because the head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has become the person who has never been a diplomat or had never dealt, has ever dealt with diplomatic relations. Maybe they do not know how to work when the head of the state just tabled some initiatives. As a fact, the diplomats send some specific documents and materials to the addressee. These can be notes or some other forms of addresses or it can be verbally or in written form. Maybe they were guided by this unprofessional diplomat. diplomat. They just even did not have not coordinated and just do not catch up how the communication between the states is being done. I think it's not easy for me to say. I think it would be good if someone in Paris will reveal its interest in what is happening there. But I can ask a practical question. So what specific terrorists and terrorism the, the French president refers to, which in the recent days said that he will send his army to Ukraine, but I'm not clear whether it would be his French soldiers or some other soldiers. I think first and foremost, what Paris should do if they are interested in peace, fighting against terrorism and all the bad things in the world, I think they should stop funding the criminal French regime, which used terrorist methods while committing regular attacks on the civilian objects and on civilians of the Russian Federation. Otherwise, I get the sense that our French colleagues define for themselves some good terrorism to which the French foreign minister can put a blind eye, letting it kill civilians and not even the Russian civilians. And